So what happened to the turps? I mean, yeah, we noticed Friday morning that we had some one of in our, in our courtyard some of the iron fencing around one of the decorative uh, decorative iron fencing around one of the oak trees was sort of taken and thrown into the center of the courtyard. And so that got us curious as to what happened. Because of course with shelter in place, there's not a lot of activity going on around here. And so we looked at our video surveillance and saw that a man had come in from this side of our courtyard uh, and he had come in through one of the gates and as he opened it, he wrenched it open about four or five times, gave it some good tugs on it, which kept it then from closing. And he strolled through our courtyard and we followed him with our surveillance system and he had come across the decorative fencing around the oak tree and ripped that up and threw it to the center of the courtyard and kind of made his way through the other end of the courtyard and out and into the small parking lot over here to my, to my right and peeked through one of the doors and kept on walking. For most people, kind of small scale, but it does concern you. I mean, you have this person wandering around destroying things. Yeah, you know, one of the first thoughts that occurred to me when we saw him, just the manner in which he seemed so frustrated, was that he was probably having a rough day. Something happened and got him frustrated or angry and we happened to be one of the outlets for him to, our property happened to be one of the outlets for him to relieve that frustration. And, and so, because the property damage, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just stuff for us, right? I mean, we're, we're more concerned with someone's spiritual condition and just, how they're, how they're managing life uh, in the Lord that way. And, and so, but we did recognize that our property was vandalized and a crime had been committed. And so we sent the video footage over to Pleasant Hill Police Department just so they could then do their job. So at this point, you guys concerned, on guard, or where are you guys at at this point with this? Not concerned, we're not concerned with what, what this gentleman did or what happened or any concern for any future. Uh, vandalism. In all honesty, I think we're looking at sort of a, as a one-off, a one-time event that happened with this with this individual, and um, we don't have really a history of folks vandalizing our church that we're aware of, and so it doesn't create too much of a stir or cause or concern for us um, as it relates to what he's done. Are you guys having services right now, or are you guys online? We or? are. We're, we're online, uh, online, and then we also have folks out in the courtyard here watching online. Okay. So we have some TVs out there and folks are watching online from the courtyard. Anything that you're gonna take from this experience to next Sunday's message? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, really, as, uh, as we thought about in the grand scheme, it seems so minor, but then recognizing as much attention has been brought to it, given, given the protection the churches are afforded when it comes to vandalism, maybe, maybe it might stir up something in us to be talking at a, broader detail about what, what happened and maybe how we might be of ministry and care to those around our community in a better way. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a strange time for all of us, right? We're all kind of sheltered in place and isolated and alone. And um, we believe that we need people around us. And we believe the Bible teaches that. And that the real hope that people have is Jesus Christ. And, and so if this man would ever make his way back here, he'd be welcome. We'd be happy to, to talk to him, minister to him, and, and speak to him about the hope that he needs.